Welcome to the fifth episode of The Goody Show, brought to you by the Mental Health Foundation Australia. This is where we try and have a slightly light-hearted it a little bit and try and see the funny side of it, if possible. Today we'll be dealing with panic attacks. A panic attack is an overwhelming fear, uh, sense of fear and tension. Symptoms of a panic attack include a very rapid heartbeat, a feeling like you're having a heart attack sometimes, is often confused with a heart attack, sweating, shaking, shortness of breath, nausea, butterflies, feeling dizzy, lightheaded and even numb. Panic attacks come on fairly suddenly and can last, last anywhere from a few minutes to an hour. Panic attacks can be caused by stress, but they can also be associated with a family history of panic attacks and associated unfortunately with drug and alcohol use and certain medical conditions. It's estimated that 35% of people suffer from a panic attack at some stage during their lives. Are you feeling at all panicky today, Lucia? I do, I always feel panicky when I see you especially, but some people think that, you know, I'm... When you feel me, I make you feel panicky. Yes. How can I make it? Because you just explained that, you know, it's, it's dizziness, it's the, the butterflies, and that's how I feel when I see you. Is, is this a romantic feeling? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I was fishing there. I didn't think it was a romantic feeling. But that, that's, that's all right. That's okay. So, um, I've got a joke for you. Yes. All right. Let me, let, now, you've got to listen very carefully to this one, otherwise you're going to miss it. Trump and I, Trump and I, you know, I always say Donald, the Donald and I, Trump and I, take Xanax for our panic attacks. Do you know the reasons? No. Well, I'll tell you the reasons. I take them for my panic attacks and he takes them for his his panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? Did you like that? Yes, yes. Okay. I get it, what I about get you? it. Did you like... No, she didn't like it. It was, it was fabulous. <laughs> it was fabulous, okay. I believe you've got one too. Yes, yes. Um... My psychologist says that, you know, I have uh, problems with, with trust. Trust issues. Yes, trust issues. Right, okay. Yes. Right. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> I must not like tomatoes. <laughs> this is a whole new story, audience, that I won't go into, but I've only just learned what trust tomatoes are they don't have to do with bridges necessarily so so that's fine let's divert attention from us at the moment yes, because yes. we're really not kicking on here really no. too well are we just just at this moment you know so let me introduce Amanda and I always call you Cox for some um, unknown reason it's Cops, yes you got it right today. oh did I oh I yep. meant to say Fabulous, Coy yeah. okay <laughs> Amanda Cox Amanda Cox hello uh, hello Amanda hello. welcome well, thank you very you've, much you've been well Oh yes, and I've been also. attended to. It You've been given the wonderful. treatment. I'm looking, I'm looking Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, audience. And you, you suffer from panic attacks, or you used to suffer. From I did. Panic attacks. Yes, I did indeed suffer from panic attacks. It was, uh, yeah, um, an interesting stage in my life. Can I ask you some questions about so your panic can. attacks, yep. if that's all right? Because I know it is a sensitive issue with some people. Yeah, and it all is tomfoolery nice. aside, yeah, yeah. panic attacks are so com common, and many people attend hospitals because they actually believe they're having a heart attack. Why do you think people don't talk about this really quite common experience that a third of people suffer from mm. at some stage during their lifetime? Mm. Look, they don't talk about it because uh, there's an element of shame involved. You know, people are expected in today's society to be able to hold it all together and, and achieve everything. And when they look weak and when they, they suffer from something that uh, can be quite... Um, can affect your daily life they really don't want to talk about it they want to you know they want to hide it they want to uh, suppress it down and it's embarrassing we all want to seem as if we're in control in some so, we certainly do yes for sure and that's one of the main reasons but we'll discuss later on it actually you know that control issue can actually contribute to having uh, um, anxiety and having panic attacks 
Um, Mandy, can I ask you um, to tell us a little bit about your story? Like, uh, when did you start having the panic attacks and were they related to particular situations or events that triggered them? Yeah, I um, started having panic attacks during high school and uh, it just grew and grew and I really didn't recognise, you know, later on to later on in life what it was until I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and it was stress induced as well, workplace stress induced. Um, but it was also uh, induced, and I, and I have had this in degrees for a good portion of my life, it tends to come and go, uh, from situational areas of travel. I have some problems with travel, uh, particularly plane flights and trains, uh, buses, yeah. I don't do a lot of public transport as a result um, because it's something to do with control and unknown outcomes. Right. So that will quite often trigger a panic attack and, and it can come in many, many forms. So like the list that we, we said before, um, you know, it can be a small amount of those or, or a large amount of those. What, what's the main thing that you experience? An overwhelming sense of doom. Doom. Like a heaviness and your brain gets to the point where you're not actually able to associate it with your body movements and your, your brain just basically just has a little bit of a, um, a bit of a, a fuse, a bit of a wire, a bit of a break and you're not actually able, you've got to really work on composing yourself in order to actually go through the steps to calm yourself down mentally. I understand you no longer have these panic attacks. Oh. Did you receive treatment or did yeah. you develop your own uh, uh, coping? Yeah, a number, a number of things. In my 20s I saw a hypnotherapist, uh, a German lady um, who was amazing. Uh, her name was Dr. Gitta Trexler um, and she helped me with hypnosis. And I saw her for over a period of six months or so and I learned some very incredible coping mechanisms that basically would shut it down within maybe two or three minutes. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's other things that, you know, I've used uh, cognitive behavioural therapy, so CBD, um, and those types of break and release, de-stressing kind of tools that you can do, like um, uh, exposing yourself to cold water or fresh air or those sorts of things, like deep breathing. They, they seem to be quite effective stoppers as well. So you no longer drink coffee? I don't drink coffee, no. What no. do you substitute? I do drink some tea. Um, I was trying to cut down. But I just generally drink water or I'm a bit partial to a no sugar soft drink, which I probably shouldn't have, but I do. Well, of course, we, look, we have some water. nice water here. Yes, we do. Saka. Yes, water. Saka water. Um, this this uh, Saka water is actually um, the most awarded in Australia. Is that right? Yes, for its purity. Yeah, it's very nice. I've had some Perhaps before. you can tell us a little bit more about some of this apparatus behind us. Yeah, so... Um, our kind sponsors uh, for this episode is Alkaline World and Cubings Australia. So um, the uh, owner of Alkaline World is here with us as well, Richard Ayub, um, who's in our audience. Now, Richard Ayub from Alkaline uh, World, his products are the best nature um, made alkaline products, providing a more healthier lifestyle. You can check out all his products at alkalineworld.com.au. And um, here we have Alkaline Greens, we have uh, ZO1, and we have one of the, um, I would say, the best product would be Moringa, um, and we have ZO Zone. What's this little one? ZO Zone. What does that do? Will that help me think more clearly? Well, it acti it's activated zeolite with magnesium. What does that do? <laughs> we, will let, we will let Richard tell Richard, you. what does that do? Function. Zeolite is designed to remove heavy metals and toxins from the body, so you are spot on. It does give you clarity, because when you get rid of toxins out of the body, you think clearer. I was think I was hoping so, because I used to swim in mercury as a child, so I should be drinking a lot of that, Absolutely. I think, shouldn't I? Thank you. It'll do wonders, Jim. It'll do Yay. wonders, I'm sure. And also at Alkaline World, you'll, you'll find Cubings um, Australia, so Cubings have the best awarded um, juices as well. Um, and you can find all his products, especially Saka water. Like this is, must be one of the most tastiest and smoothest. No, I agree. I've, I've had a sample and it really is good. <laughs> pure. Did you know that humans are made out of um, 60, I think it's 65% of water? Looking at you, I can't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our cells though are made out of 99% um, of water. So imagine, you know, we are, we, we are living water 
um, beings. beings. So yeah. it would be great to you know fill yourself with pure water, the goodness, yeah. instead of the badness. So what you put in is not only healthy for your mind, but healthy for your body as well. And we're very grateful to Richard for supporting the Mental Health Foundation. Thank you very much, Richard, for your, for your support. And I think I've lost the script. Where am I up to? Um, oh, I see. Thank you. Here's your point. Yeah. What did it actually feel like? You pointed to the wrong bit. What did it actually feel like to experience a panic attack? Very, very overwhelming. And, and very, at the same time, if you're mentally enough aware that you're realising that it is ridiculous that it's actually not logical, it's not based in fact, you know that... You know, there's no things... reason for you to be reacting and feeling... No, of course not. Way. Like in a plane, for example, there's no reason that I... Honestly, the, the, the percentage rates of planes falling out of skies is very minimal, but for some unknown reason, when I'm on a plane, it's going to fall out of the sky, as a fact. Mm. But it's not going to fall well, out I mean of the sky, as a fact. It's fine. I'm actually pretty good these days. I'm not a bad traveller. Um, so... Yeah, it, it, there's no there's no logic in it, and so it's a case of having to really work in the mind to bring it back to the current then and now, and knowing that it's not a reality situation. You've probably already answered this, but given how common they are, these panic attacks, as I said, a third of people during their lifetime, and that's probably a, a great underestimation. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we talk about it more often? Because, because yeah, really, it's, yeah. it's a it's a it's a lead-in problem to other issues. Yes, it can very much, very much so. If you don't get your anxiety, you don't get your panic attacks under control, you know, it can lead to isolation, uh, you, you know, and, and the more you, you have them, it, it attracts more and more of them. Yeah. So, you know, the, the idea is that you've got to try and work as quickly as possible to kind of nip them in the bud and seek professional help. And, and not degenerate into depression. Because That's exactly right. Exhausting. So don't, don't, don't isolate yourself to the point where you are, you know, falling into a depressive pattern. Uh, and then your, your problems are far, far larger than a panic attack every now and then. Yeah. So um, how do your panic attacks affect your day-to-day -day life? Well, these days they really don't. Yeah. Um, it's only when I'm under extreme stress or something like a new job or uh, yeah, and like a long-distance plane flight um, and even things like, um, you know, presenting or, you know, or having to speak in public or these sorts of events. Uh, you know, so I you're don't... panicking now? No, not at all. No, no I'm, I'm panicking. Very relaxed. I'm the one who's having a panic attack. <laughs> not her. You Jim. two are fine. Jim. I'm freaking out. Practice some CBD. Come on, with me. Breathe in. Breathe out. See? Lovely. There it is. It's Jeff, not helping. He needs it. It's not helping. My age, I might be having a heart attack. No, That's because you're sitting <laughs> in the middle of two amazing women. I yes, thought I was the so. rose between the two thorns, no, but you, oh, you would no. disagree with that, I imagine. Yes, of course you would, and everybody else would too. I, but I've got to try, haven't I? Yeah, do your best. Do my best, <laughs> which is pretty weak. <laughs> no. Jim, Jim, I, Jim, I believe um, there's people in what the audience this? that would like to ask some questions too. I've still got one more to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can ask first. Then. Can I ask my don't one panic. question? Come on, don't panic. You can you, ask. You really sent me into a spin there. Yeah. I've got, don't panic. Because don't I have panic. heard that you've. Got Go. Got some dietary advice. Also. I do. I do. I'm actually a qualified food scientist, so I've actually worked oh, wow. in, the, in the field of food science, and uh, I know that for myself, therapeutically, having a very high protein diet with lots of greens and uh, fruits and veggies that, that are suitable, yeah, that are suitable for, for me, um, really does help. Keeping away from processed sugar um, and too much fat, of course, and um, basically, yeah, limiting bad food, junk food, um, and you know, trying to get decent sleep uh, really does contribute to uh, keeping you know, these sorts of things at bay. You yes. know, find that you know, if you so overstimulate, it can be a problem. So it's mainly the caffeine and the sugars that... For, for me, yeah, caffeine from way back, yeah, and, and sugars is definitely, definitely a problem. And it's a problem for you know, most of the population. Overconsumption of sugar is a trigger for a lot of health issues. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, lowering your sugar, um, getting a good night's sleep, drinking plenty of water, sucker of course, and uh, you know living a clean diet, and of course limiting alcohol too. Right. Number one, that is also alcohol. number one. Oh. Limiting alcohol consumption. I was afraid you were going to say. Yeah, that. sorry. Um, yeah, alcohol consumption does contribute to panic attacks and anxiety <laughs> a lot. I'm just, I'm just disappointed, Jim, severely. I'm sorry, Jim. I'm sorry, Jim. Them's the breaks. Questions? I'm not a very good advocate for mental health, am I? <laughs> Audience questions? Yes. <laughs> So, in having uh, uh, 
panic attacks develop into other conditions like depression or something else? Certainly can. It most certainly can. If you don't seek you know, medical attention, if you don't put your hand up and acknowledge that this is what's going on, and there's no shame in that, you should always you know, come forward if, you're not, if you think that you're not okay. Even if it is something else, you know, it's always best to go forward. It's like if you go to the hospital with a, a tight chest, you know, they don't turn you away because they just want to roll out and make sure that you're okay. And it's exactly the same with things like panic attacks. Go to your GP, uh, get checked out, and if they say no, there's nothing wrong with you physically, go see a psychologist, go talk it out because it will help you. Anyone else? So, is it possible to die from panic attack? Well, if you don't have any pre-consisting heart conditions, then most likely you will not die from a panic attack. It might feel like that, it might feel overwhelming, um, but you know, putting some strategies into place, you know, you'll learn quickly and you'll be able to recognise in yourself when you are having a panic, uh, and that you'll be able to pull yourself in and, and control the situation. But so many people do feel like they're actually going to die, yes. and they do front up at, uh, we have, uh, president of the Mental Health Foundation is a cardiologist, mm -hmm. and he yep. has a lot of people who come to him yep. claiming that they're, you know, yep. they're, they're having really, a heart attack. They're having well, a, they've they've angina, had a heart attack. And they've got angina because they're having these panic attacks regularly, so they're thinking it's just these minor things that built up, and then they might have a big panic attack, and they're assuming then they have, they're having a, you know, a full, you know, a full, lethal a full cardiac event. situation. A cardiac yes, situation. Yes, but they are just having a panic attack. And there's, you know, I think the, the more we normalise it and we take the stigma away from it, I think the better off everyone will be. I'm going to impress you now. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I'm keen. The College of GPs has actually done surveys on this and one of their most recent surveys was of 1,500 GPs. Right. And of the 1,500 GPs, they, they answered that 62% of their patients actually came in with psychological issues, mainly panic disorder, claiming that they you know, had heart attacks, they had gastric issues, but they were related to panic attacks. Mm -hmm. Not all the 62%, you but, know, but a, portion of a, a large proportion. So it just goes to show in your stats, I yep. mean, the 30 33% marker of people Huge. having them, it is under, under, under reported under severity. Reported, under yep. reported. Under reported. Well, well and truly under reported. Yep. Yeah. So go to your GP, get looked at, talk yep. about it, bring talk it out to the it. open. Which is the good message for all mental health, it isn't is, it? Amanda? That's exactly right, mm -hmm. yes. Talk about it. Talk, talk about, about it. it. Be open, don't be ashamed, reduce stigma. Well, I think we're just about out of time, unless you would like to say more about yes. our sponsorship. And so. Yes, so I'd like to thank um, uh, uh, all our sponsors for today, but also um, I would like to talk about my beautiful yes, gown. Don't you get the gown? I this was wondering about that. Can I get one like that, do you think? Ah, uh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not quite sure if um, the designer will be so thrilled, but No, I'm I think sure. the colour would suit me, though. <laughs> It actually would. You've got a tie like that. I do. Yeah. I do. You, you'll look quite smitten. <laughs> smitten as a kitten. S smitten and smiting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, I would like to uh, thank Alida Valente from um, uh, Bonita Couture and also Martha, which is um, in our audience today. She's been gracious enough to do our hair and makeup for the last few shows. Much. And a wonderful job she's done too. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Marta of Liliette Hair and uh, Beauty and Skincare, and you can find her as well um, on her website, uh, which we'll all tag and everything like that. But um, like I said, um, this beautiful gown from Benito Couture, and I'd like to just just point out, you know, her beautiful gown. Who's that, that a picture of, by the way? <laughs> my twin sister. <laughs> so just to point out um, the beautiful gowns that she's um, actually sponsored me throughout my whole journey as well on the cover of a lot of magazines. And her dresses are amazing. She She's in Brunswick, so uh, look her up and go and uh, see what you like. She also dresses all the footy stars, um, wives. All the wags. Yes, wow. all the wags. So the wags. I'm quite, you know, quite happy about um, being dressed by her today, and I think that she's so fabulous. It's a gorgeous Excellent. dress. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a gorgeous gown, it really is. Yeah. So if you're a budding uh, designer out there or an artist who would like to join us and hold hands with us at the Mental Health Foundation Australia, um, especially for our goodies show or one of our events, 
please reach out to us because I would love for you to uh, transform me into a beautiful princess with your art. Um, we'll also love any sponsors who would like to jump on board for this great cause. Thank you, Lucia. And look, going from one degree of high fashion to another, I would like to talk about my hat. Um, no one's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, one's, no one's amused by that little segue that no, I used. Where's the there. badge today? No, I'm not doing the badge today. I'm going to talk about the whole hat and where it came from. It's, it's actually hat. a Queensland cattleman's hat and it came from Winton in oh. outback western Queensland. The dinosaur capital of Australia and the birthplace of Walt Walsey Matilda, which was written by Banjo Patterson way back when in the day. Winton may be small in stature, but it's big in offerings, just like myself. Small oh. in stature, but big in <laughs> offerings. Particularly the cultural variety, not to mention the burgeoning scene, film scene, um, and it's dubbed, in fact, the Hollywood of the Out. Is it so, right? Yes. Yes, because of all wow. the popular movies that are filmed there. And they have an enormous uh, annual cinema celebration oh. in Winton. So there you go. That's something for you and Brendan to keep in mind it when is. you go caravanning. Caravanning on our travels. To Winton we go. But the real point, I mean, apart from the fact that I bought this gorgeous fashion item at Winton, Winton is the fact that unlike many remote rural towns, Winton has an adult mental health service and assessment treatment centre that operates for 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day, which is quite remarkable. Uh, it's an information and referral service, primarily. So uh, if you need treatment, people in uh, Western Queensland, please contact Winton. Congratulations, Winton, because we hope that many more of our rural and remote areas had such services, which unfortunately, currently, they do not. Now, I'm afraid we're going to have to finish the fun and joy here. Look, I'm oh. really sorry, because I've really enjoyed today. Me too. Course. It's been you fun. You enjoyed it? Did you enjoy Especially it? your song. You've got to close off with that song. What was that song? <laughs> oh, yeah. Good? I'm just 16, going on 17, never been kissed before. No way! <laughs> I'm going to end it there and say that next month the Goody Show will deal with our Hearing Voices group, which we are shortly going to be calling the... Schizophrenia Support Group. So until then, I look forward to seeing you all again this time next month. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you.